Maharashtra Physical, the mountainous region, Sahyadri Mountains. The Sahyadri Mountains are also known as the Western Ghats. These mountains that lie parallel to the coast of Maharashtra have an average altitude of 900 meters. The altitude generally decreases towards the north. This mountain spreads in the north-south direction. Its western slopes are steep, while the eastern ones are comparatively gentle. There are a number of peaks in this mountain. Kalsubai, with an altitude of 1,646 meters, is the highest peak in Maharashtra. The major rivers of Konkan and the plateau region have their sources in the Sahyadri Mountains. While traveling to and fro from the plateau region to the Konkan, one has to cross the Sahyadri Mountains. To facilitate this, winding roads or ghats have been constructed in these mountains. Satpura Mountains The Satpura mountain range is located in the northern part of Maharashtra. The western part of this range is in the Nandurbar district. This includes high altitude regions like Toran Mal Plateau and Asthamba Peak. Of these, the Asthamba is the highest peak in the Satpura region. Its altitude is 1,325 meters. The Raver Burhanpur Pass is in the central part of this mountain. It is called Burhanpur Pass. To the east of this mountain is the Gavilgarh Range. It extends into Amravati and Akola districts. The Plateau Region Maharashtra Plateau The region lying to the east of the Sahyadri Mountains is known as the Maharashtra Plateau. It is a part of the Deccan Plateau. The average height of this plateau is 600 meters. A number of hill ranges and river basins can be seen over this plateau. Hill ranges branching off from the Sahyadri Mountains include the Satmala Ajanta, Harish Chandra Balaghat and Mahadeo Ranges. These ranges separate the basins of the Godavari, the Bhima and the Krishna rivers respectively. The Tapi Basin lies between the Satpura mountain and the Satmala Ajanta range. The eastern part of the Maharashtra plateau is a low-lying plain. This low-lying portion to the east of Varda district has an average altitude of 300 meters. The overall slope of Maharashtra plateau is from west to east. Rivers in Maharashtra the major rivers of Maharashtra and their basins are shown in this figure. Some of the rivers in Maharashtra flow westward and join the Arabian Sea. Some are east-flowing rivers. These flow into the Bay of Bengal. In the far eastern part of the state, there are some south-flowing rivers. River Narmada This river flows along the northern boundary of Nandurbar district. It further flows through Gujarat and terminates in the Arabian Sea. River Tapi The basin of this river occupies a large portion of North Maharashtra. This river has its source in Madhya Pradesh. The Puma, Girna and Panjra are its major tributaries in Maharashtra. This river further flows through Gujarat before meeting the Arabian Sea. Rivers from Konkan The major rivers in Konkan are west-flowing rivers. The major rivers are the Vaitarna, Ulhas, Savitri, Vashishti, Shastri and Terekhol. These originate along the western slopes of the Sahyadri mountain and meet the Arabian Sea. Compared to the rivers on the plateau region, they travel a very short distance. The western slopes of Sahyadris are steep and the courses of rivers 
also have steep slopes and therefore the rivers in Konkan flow with a great speed. This has caused development of estuaries at the mouths of most of these rivers. The river Terekhol flows along the extreme southern boundary of the state. East Flowing Rivers River Godavari The river Godavari has its source at Trembakeshwar in Nashik district. This major river is also the longest in Maharashtra. A large part of Maharashtra is occupied by its basin. The Pravara, Sindhpana, Dudhna, Pranita and the Indravati are its major tributaries. The Godavari further flows through Andhra Pradesh before entering the Bay of Bengal. The Vardha and Ganga rivers flow in the eastern part of the state. Pain Ganga is a tributary of the Vardha. Both Vardha and Ganga are south-flowing rivers. The combined flow of these two rivers is known as the Pranita. River Pranita further flows into the Godavari. River Indravati flows along the extreme eastern boundary of the state. Further, it empties itself into the Godavari. River Bhima This river originates at Bhima Shankar in the Pune district. The Ghod, Nira, Sina, the Maan and the Mula Mutha are its major tributaries. The river Bhima meets the river Krishna in Karnataka state. River Krishna This river originates at Mahabaleshwar in Satara district. The Koina, Yerala, Vama and the Panchganga are its major tributaries. The river Krishna further flows through Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh before flowing into the Bay of Bengal. Maharashtra Climate The Coastal Region The temperature in Konkan is always high and hence its climate is hot. Due to nearness of the sea, the amount of moisture in the air is also high. Therefore, it is humid. Moreover, there is little difference in the temperature throughout the day. Also, the temperature does not vary much during the different seasons. Hence, the climate is said to be equable. Thus, the climate of Konkan is hot, humid and equable. The mountainous region. The temperature decreases as we go up. Therefore, the temperature in the high altitude areas of the Sahyadri and Satpura mountains remains low. That is why there are hill stations in the high altitude areas of these mountains. The hill stations Matheran, Lonavla, Khandala, Panchgani, Mahabaleshwar, Amboli, etc. are in the Sahyadri ranges, while Toranmal, Pal, Chikhaldara are situated in the Satpura mountains. The Plateau Region The Plateau Region is at a moderate height. Therefore, the climate in this part is hot. It is away from the sea and therefore the day and night temperatures differ considerably on the plateau region. Similarly, there is a lot of difference in the temperature during different seasons. Hence, the climate in this region is said to be extreme. It is dry because there is not much moisture in the air. Hence, the climate of the plateau region is described as hot, dry and extreme. Now, let us learn more about the rainfall in Maharashtra. Rainfall From June to September, southwest monsoon winds blow over Maharashtra. These winds come from the Arabian Sea. As they travel over a sea, they are full of moisture. Maharashtra receives rains from these winds. These winds are obstructed by the Sahyadri Mountains in the western part of the state. Therefore, 
the mountain top region of the Sahyadris receives heavy rains. Amboli receives the highest rainfall in the state. After crossing the Sahyadri mountain top and moving eastward, these winds descend down to a lower height. As the temperature at lower altitude is high, the temperature of these winds also increases. As a result, they can hold more moisture. This leads to the lowering of rainfall to the east of the Sahyadri mountain. The low rainfall zone thus caused due to a hill or mountain is called a rain shadow area. While blowing further east, these winds move away from the Sahyadri mountains and move beyond the rain shadow effect. As a result, rainfall increases in the eastern parts of the state. The Konkan and Sahyadri mountain regions receive more than 3,000 millimeters rainfall. Along the eastern slopes of the Sahyadri mountains and in the far eastern parts of the state, the rainfall is between 1,000 and 3,000 millimeters. In the plateau region, it is between 600 and 1,000 millimeters. In the rain shadow area, it is less than 600 millimeters. The distribution of rainfall in Maharashtra is uneven. Moreover, rainfall is irregular. Many times, this has an adverse effect on the agriculture in Maharashtra. Maharashtra Population and Human Life Population Due to the rapid growth of industries in and around the larger cities, the population there increases rapidly. Examples of such cities are Mumbai, Pune and Nagpur. Population is higher also in the fertile tracts of river basins. This image shows the distribution of population in Maharashtra. Try to find from this figure areas of dense and sparse population in Maharashtra. Find reasons behind this with the help of your teacher. Use this image to find the reasons. According to the 2001 census, the population of Maharashtra is 9 crores and 68 lakhs. As per the same census, Mumbai suburban district has the highest population, whereas Sindhu Durg has the lowest population in Maharashtra. The population of Maharashtra has increased greatly because of the following factors. 1. Availability of health and medical facilities. 2. Eradication of communicable diseases. 3. Improvement in the standard of living of the people. 4. Migration of people from other parts of the country due to better job opportunities. Human life. The diet of the people belonging to a region, their attire, houses, standard of living, language, fairs and festivals, all are influenced by the geographical conditions prevailing in that region. This gives rise to a typical way of life. This is known as human life in that region. There is a considerable difference in the human life in urban and rural areas. Urban areas are densely populated. Urban areas provide job opportunities on a large scale. In cities, there is a distance between the place where people work and their residence. That is why transport facilities are essential in urban areas. Increasing population puts heavy stress on water supply, transport and other public services. The activities of people in rural areas are normally based on the natural resources available in their close surroundings. The settlements in rural areas are small in size. We find that human life is different in urban and rural areas. Students, 
Let us try to understand the human life in Konkan and the plateau region as well as the life of the Adivasis. Life in Konkan The rainfall in Konkan is heavy. Hence, the houses in this region have slanting roofs. Roofs are often tiled. In some places, laterite bricks are used for building walls. Agriculture is the main occupation of the people in Konkan. Along the coast, we have a number of settlements of Kolis who are engaged in fishing. Rice is a major crop of the Konkan region. It forms the staple diet of the people in Konkan. Their diet also includes nachini bhakri, different types of pulses and vegetables. The diet of people in the coastal region includes fish and rice. As the climate of Konkan is hot and humid, people generally use cotton clothes. Men use shirt, trousers, pajama, bandi, etc. Women wear saris. Kolis near the seashore use a typical headgear. People mostly speak Marathi and Malwani. Holi and Ganesh festival are celebrated on a large scale in Konkan. Many people from Konkan migrate to Mumbai for employment. Life on the Plateau Region As the Plateau Region receives less rainfall, the roofs of houses in this region are mostly flat. The houses have cement or earthen walls. The roofs are flat, built in sand and lime. Some houses have tin sheet roofs which may be tiled. Some houses are built with stone. Agriculture is the main occupation of the people in this region. Animal husbandry is practiced as a subsidiary activity. Cottage industries are seen at a number of places. People in cities are engaged in industries, trade and service. Jowar or sorghum, bajra or millet bhakri, various types of pulses, leafy and other vegetables are included in the diet of the people from the plateau region. However, in the eastern part of the state, rice forms the major item of people's diet. Chapati and different pulses also find place in their diet. Because the climate here is hot, dry and extreme, people use cotton clothes. Men use shirt and trousers. Women wear saris. Some people use pajama, dhoti, cap, etc. Young people prefer modern clothing. Marathi is the main language of the region. In the northern part of Nashik division, people speak Ahirani. Festivals like Holi, Dasara, Diwali, Bailpora are celebrated in this region. Many festivals are celebrated by people belonging to different religions. Life of the Adivasis Since long, some people have been living in remote regions. For their livelihood, they depend on the natural resources available in their surroundings. They have their own dialect, traditional attire and customs. These people are known as Adivasis. Generally, the houses of Adivasis are made up of straw, bamboo and leaves and branches of trees. Their settlements are called differently in different regions. For example, Pada, Pad, Tola, Zap, etc. Many Adivasis collect minor forest produce like wood, bamboo, tendu leaves, medicines, gum, honey, etc. Recently, some people have started farming. Depending on the availability, their diet includes rice, natani, bajra, varai, and pulses like wal, chauli, hulga, urid, moong, tur, etc. The tribal attires have a good deal of variety. 
men use short dhoti, bandi and turban, while women use saris or their traditional costumes. Adivasis deck themselves with feathers of different colors, beads, shells and silver ornaments. Recently, in some parts, men have started using shirts and trousers. Adivasis from different parts speak different dialects. Most of the Adivasis are nature worshippers. The names of their deities are related to nature. They have their own dances, songs, ornaments, attire, fairs and festivals. Banjara, Laman, Pardhi, Kaikadi, Dhangar, etc. are some of the major nomadic tribes in our state. As a result of the variations in the physical setup and climate in the different parts of the state, we find that human life also varies considerably in different parts. Maharashtra, Water and Marine Resources Water Resources Major sources of water in Maharashtra Rivers, lakes, wells, reservoirs on dams, etc. are the main sources of water. Students, let us study about the sources of water in Maharashtra. Wells and Tube Wells In Maharashtra, wells are the major source of water supply. Rainwater seeps into the ground through the cracks, fissures and pores and gets stored under the ground. This is called ground water. This water becomes available to us through wells and tube wells at a number of places. Basalt is the dominant rock in Maharashtra. As this is a hard and impervious or non-porous rock, the ground water availability in this rock is quite limited. Wells and tube wells are used to extract water along the river banks in the areas of porous rock and in the alluvial tracts. This water is used mainly for agriculture. Due to the growing use of groundwater in the state, it is now proving inadequate to feed wells and tube wells. In some parts, wells and tube wells are going dry. In order to change this situation, it is necessary that the groundwater is utilized judicially. Moreover, in order to make groundwater available continuously, it is necessary to allow rainwater to seep into the ground. For this purpose, it is necessary to construct different types of bunds and continuous contour trenches or CCTs at different locations and also to plant trees. These are called water conservation works. Rivers, dams and lakes A number of dams have been constructed across many rivers in Maharashtra. From these dams, canals are laid out to supply water for agriculture. Fishing is carried out in the lakes as well as in the reservoirs of dams. At some dams, power is generated. Pofali or Koina, Jayakwadi, Bhira, Yeldari, Radhanagri, Khopoli, Bhivpuri, etc. are the major hydroelectricity generation centers in the state. Marine Resources The ocean also provides us with marine resources. These include different mineral shells, sand, salt, fish, etc. We get sand along the sea beaches and in the estuaries. At a number of places, these sands contain valuable minerals that are used in construction work. A number of handicraft items are made from the shells that we find along the sea coast. Sea water contains salts. From it, we get common salt. During high tide, Sea water spreads over the coastal land. Wide, shallow beds are constructed in such areas and the sea water is stored in them. The water thus stored gets evaporated, leaving behind salt. 
the beds in which salt is thus obtained are called salt pans. In our state, salt pans are seen at places like Bhayandar, Vasai, Dahanu, etc. The state of Maharashtra has a 720 km long sea coast. Fishing is carried out in the coastal areas. Fish is one of the major resources obtained from seas. Our state leads in marine fishing. Sea water contains various types of fish and other aquatic life forms. We obtain pomfrey, surmai, ravas, bombay duck, prawns, etc. from the sea. Besides being a food item, they are useful as fertilizers and in the production of poultry feed and medicines. Aquatic life forms like fish, prawns, etc. are perishable. These are dried or salted in order to preserve them. They are also stored in airtight containers or cold storages. Maharashtra Forests and Wildlife Forest Wealth Evergreen Forests Evergreen forests are generally found in the areas that receive more than 3,000 millimeters of rainfall. There are different types of trees in these forests. Therefore, the forests appear green throughout the year. Evergreen forests are found in the southern part of the Sahyadri Mountains. Trees like Nag Champa, Jamun, Jackfruit, Oil Palm, as well as bamboo and cane are found in these forests. Semi-evergreen forests Semi-evergreen forests are generally found in the region of 1000 to 3000 mm rainfall. The diversity of trees in these forests is limited as compared to that in the evergreen forests. These forests are located along the slope of the Sahyadri mountain and also along the western slopes in the northern portion. Mango, jackfruit, ain, kinjal, kadamb, silk cotton, etc. are the major trees found in these forests. Mango is the state tree of Maharashtra. Deciduous forests in the area where rainfall is between 600 and 1000 millimeters and the availability of water is limited due to low rainfall, almost all the trees shed their leaves in a specific season. Forests with such trees are called deciduous forests. These are seen in the low rainfall region in the Konkan, the eastern slopes of the Sahyadri Mountains, the Satpura Mountains, different hill ranges on the plateau region and the eastern part of the state. Teak, Hirida, Banyan, Flame of the Forest, Salai, Moh, etc. are the trees found in these forests. These forests occupy much of the forest area of our state. Shrubs and Thorny Scrub Forests The shrubs and thorny scrub forests are found in the areas with less than 600 millimeters of rainfall. In order to maintain their water content, trees in such forests have very tiny leaves. Also, they are thorny. These forests are typical of the rain shadow areas in the state. Babul, Boar, Cactus, Khair, etc. are the major trees of these forests. Mangroves Mangroves are found in the estuaries along the western coast. They grow in the brackish water containing salts. Mangroves protect coastal lands from sea waves. They provide protection to various aquatic life forms of the coastal region. Importance of Forests Forests provide a number of benefits. Due to the forests, the air remains cool. They restrict erosion of land. They allow greater seepage of water into the ground and help in reducing the pollution level. The atmosphere is pleasant in the regions of forests. 
forests provide shelter to the wildlife. We get a number of major and minor produce from the forests. Conservation of forests Conservation of forests means protecting and maintaining the forest resources. Nowadays, forests are disappearing fast. We must plant different types of trees and maintain them. Trees should be grown in fallow lands, on hill slopes, in the open areas surrounding houses and along both sides of roads and railway tracks. This activity will help in lowering the pollution in our surrounding. This will also enhance our forest resources.